this is the one that that I wanted you to discuss, and and you have wanted to discuss. Kentucky forty two, LSU twenty one. This was a thirty five to seven ball game in the third quarter. It was as ugly as you could imagine. Ed Orgeron came out after the game and said that he was surprised by Kentucky's ground game. And I don't know why you would be surprised considering they have led the league in rushing for a while. So, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't get that. The The AD and the president of LSU were both in attendance at this game in Lexington. That is not a common occurrence. Yeah, On the sideline the entire time. Not a common occurrence. That does not usually happen. However, this is the first time that they've played in Lexington in forever. So okay, so that that so that warrants a special trip by the powers that be. I I'm I'm trying to not make as much. Out I mean, of if it. the first time they went to Vanderbilt, would they just go there too? Like, I, I mean, Nashville is a fun place to spend a weekend, but is Lexington? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> I mean, Daniel jumped in. He said, "He said uh, this should be good." <laughs> no, 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 I don't care about. Listen, you're all going to be disappointed because I don't care about the game at all. Yeah. This is a throwaway game. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Here, I woke up and I said, I want to talk about this because I woke up and for the first time I was able, I had clarity. I felt, I felt like I, I'm going to use a weird word that I probably shouldn't use, but I felt peace. Like I felt like an yes. understanding of the situation here. Here's the deal. And, and mainly because I see, I feel a lot of in common with what O's going through right now. All right. Yeah. I, I think coach O has the potential to, to be a, a, a good coach for a time. I think he can come in in the midst of chaos and not settle the chaos, but uh, thrive in the chaos, okay? But, but once confetti falls and everything needs to settle and there has to be a level of consistency and, and I'm not going to say the word professionalism, but like there's just a different way that things need to go about it. He struggles in those things. Okay. He's never been good at them ever. And which is why every time he gets an interim job, he does unbelievable. And it's why when he takes over a program, he immediately jolts that program. It's like a, a shock of lightning. Okay. Well, well, a bolt of lightning will set something ablaze for a minute, but at some point in time, it burns out. Okay. And you just can't keep going. You can't keep doing it. He isn't the offensive genius. To, to figure out any problems, to actually solve any problems. He's not the defensive genius that can actually figure out or solve any problems that the team may be having. He he also – so so the, anyway, I'm, I'm talking about a lot of his flaws. What I realized and what I understand is, is there's nothing wrong with being who you are, all right? I think he loves LSU, and I think he's doing the best job he can. I just think that there's a level that we've gotten to that he's just not good at. And I think that's okay. I think it's okay. You don't have to hate the man. You don't have to 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 wish awful things on him. You just have to move on. I've talked to you about this before. If you guys have followed this show for years and years back when I was in real management positions where I had, I don't know, 300 people working under me at a big corporation, I – I believed in a philosophy of people are get oftentimes get promoted to a level of failure. Okay. You're really good at something. And so we're going to move you up and then you're really good at that. So we're going to move you up again. And then we're going to get to a point where you're not good anymore. We've moved you up so high that now we kind of have to fire you because the morale of demoting you doesn't work. So you can't do that. This is what happened with it. I, I want I want to be really good at some things. Okay, I try the SBR show. Let's talk about that for a minute. The the, the SBR show that I do, I have found myself in a situation where I'm doing that show alone. And Gary, you know me personally. Yeah, you know my anxieties. You know the amount of work that I put into that show and how much I care about it. But I also really struggle with the fact that I. I know that I'm not great at it, and I know that I have a lot of flaws, and I know. But it is the best I can do. There, there is, there is no me giving any better. I, I study as much as I can. I watch everything I can. I write out as many notes as I can, and I still find myself getting into the show. And I, I literally forgot James Franklin's name. This is a man that we've talked about for a decade. I know uh, so many things about James Franklin that I shouldn't know. 
And I couldn't remember his name the other day. And so 45 seconds of dead air while I try to Google this man's name, you just get to a point where it doesn't matter how hard you try or how much you prepare, just some things you're just not going to be good at. And I, if you're looking for your identity in those things, you're just not going to be a happy person. And this life's not going to go well for you. Yeah. It, it's just one of those things where I think what we had with Ed was unbelievable. All right. He, he thrived in the chaos of less miles. Okay. And, and, and in spite of extra chaos that we didn't even know about until this off season that less miles was bringing into the place. All right. He managed us all the way through that. He happened to build a team of coaches and, and talent in 2019 to do something that we've never seen before. We saw something kind of like it with Auburn and Gene Sizzik and, and, and Cam Newton, but this was not that. This was, this was even greater than that. And, and I just think after that, it's one of those things where now I am the big dog and I'm playing from the front, and this is not what I'm made for. I, I need to be the underdog. I need to be the guy that's doubted. And I need to, I need to be the guy that, that nobody's believing in. And right now, not only is everybody believing in me, but they're counting on me. That's a different kind of thing. It's a different thing altogether. It's a different job. And so I think it's time. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. Absolutely. The person that I think also, by the way, I, and I'm shocked that it's Sunday morning and we haven't gotten this news yet. The person that I think they're going to call to, to stabilize the season, which I don't know it's going to help us win any football games. I told you, if we didn't win the Mississippi State game, I didn't think we would win an SEC game the entire season. I'm standing by that because I don't think we're going to win an SEC game the rest of the season. I see the schedule. The person that I think you call is the same person that is that, that, that LSU has turned to for the last 10 years whenever they need stability. It is the number one LSU man in the state of Louisiana, and that's Steve Enziger. Mm-hmm. Steve Enziger. Yeah, I, I think that's who you call and say, I know you don't want this job. I know you don't want it, okay? I know you don't. I know you want to retire. I know you want an easier, softer life. But, but, the, but, place you you. Love, but the place you love is calling you because we need you. I won't ask you to do it more than this year. And after this year, you can go on and do anything you want. I just need you to come into this locker room and get these men under control and let them know there's a guy in here that's been where they are, that's played in this field and and played in front of that crowd and knows what greatness looks like. Yes. And he knows what these men are capable of because he was around when most of them were recruited. And and I think we can see a different stabilizing team. I don't know if that's going to happen, but if I was the AD, that's what I would have done this morning. I would have had a really hard conversation with them, And then I would have had a, I would have had to do the greatest sales job I've ever done in my life to get Steve, because I don't think Steve wants to do it. No, I don't think he does either. There's a reason why he retired. Larry said, Chris, you're losing everyone here. Move on. Larry, we don't have these situations very often, so I'm going to let Chris talk about this as long as he wants no, it's to. That's fine. We can move so, on. Uh, LSU did lose Keshawn Butte late in that game. They were down 35-7 to at one point. Like I said, this was a bludgeoning. Kentucky had 330 yards rushing on 45 attempts, 7.3 yards per clip, three touchdowns rushing. Will Levis threw three touchdown passes. Will Levis only had three incompletions in the game. 14 out of 17, 145 yards. Kentucky did whatever they wanted to on this. Larry said, much love. This is, look, LSU got out physical in a way that they do not get out physical by teams like Kentucky. And, and a lot of credit goes to Mark Stoops, right? Because talking about the team that actually won the game, Kentucky looks absolutely phenomenal right now. Yeah. Like, this is such a woke, if, if, there are programs that are looking for a head coach that do not call Mark Stoops. I, and I don't know why Mark would take the job anywhere else because he has built such a good foundation in Lexington. Uh, do and you think there's a reason that the president and the athletic director came to this game? You think they would actually – I mean, I could I could see it. Like, Mark Stoops would be such a good hire in Baton Rouge. It's it's just ridiculous. Like So here's, here's a selling point to LSU's coaching job. Coaching search. This is how you sell it because it's the easiest job to sell. I actually think it's probably the best job in the country right now to sell to an up-and-coming coach yes. and or a great stable coach right now. We've won three titles in 20 years by three different coaches, two of which are nationally seen as buffoons. Yes. Okay. Which tells you it's not the head coach. If you can come here and not be a buffoon, 
you can win a championship. You can win more than one. You're not doing at Kentucky. Something you're not doing at Ole Miss. Something you're not doing at Michigan State. This is something you can do because look at the last two guys who've done it. Yes. And and by the way, for LSU, it's it, like you said, the schedule, it, it does not get easier. You've oh, got it's Florida. Over. It's The season's over now. Yeah, Florida, Ole Miss, Alabama, and Arkansas all in the next four. So yeah. that's, that's going to be rough. We didn't talk about Kentucky at all. Kentucky's great. Kentucky's 6-0. and Holy shit. Nobody in the world saw this. They've got a clash coming up with Georgia that, that should be epic. There's a world in which this sucks for Kentucky because you're you're going to be on a national TV scale level game with Georgia, and Georgia just is a, is a, is a smoke show right now. They're just I, steamrolling everybody, and that kind of sucks. There are I think there are ways that Kentucky can stay in that game. They have to. I'll tell you this: they have to make they have to make Kirby Smart make a quarterback decision. They have to make this game so ugly from a defensive side to where to where Georgia's offense is uncomfortable. Oh, and yeah. then they don't then they don't know who to play. And then you got Kirby making decisions. Once Kirby starts making decisions in games, he's usually bad at it. Yeah. Like you're Saban. Right. You're they right. They play great from the front. They don't play good in the back. The uh this game was fourteen to thirteen last year, Georgia and Kentucky. So or fourteen to three, sorry, not thirteen. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.